hear me okay? Right. This is going to be weird because I, I'll have to glimpse this. Actually, I, I planned it quite well. In case I forget what pictures I'm talking about, I put little thumbnails underneath the page. So. <laughs> yep. Fine. Okay. Um, why does Photoforum exist? In September 1967, I had to write a news item for the Wellington newspaper, The Evening Post, because the paper wasn't interested in selling a journalist to the exhibition, The Photographer's Eye, which is one of the major shows that came from the Museum of Modern Art in New York. The newspaper simply didn't want to know about the magnificent photographs of people like Edward Weston, Dorothea Lang, Paul Strand, Charles Sheila, or Henri Cartier-Bresson, let alone Robert Frank or Elliot Urwitt. Too arty, they thought, or not art, arty enough, was the uh, decision of the art fraternity, who didn't take much notice of that important show. In the 1960s, the best contemporary and historical photographs appeared in magazines like Popular Photography, Aperture, and the Swiss Camera Magazine. There was very little on photography in influential magazines like the US Art Forum or its British equivalents. Photo Forum magazine was modelled on Bill Jay's and Peter Turner's Creative Camera Magazine which presented new and old work in a clash of ideas and approaches. Len Wesney had to go to London to meet his hero, uh, Bill Brandt, who he imitated, emulated. So. <laughs> in New Zealand then, we had the magazines of the Conservative Photographic Society of New Zealand, which was obsessed with competitions, and we had New Zealand Studio representing the obsession of, with money and mana, the respectability of the professionals. I wrote articles about photography and photographs for both, and had contentious articles uh, rejected. I also wrote for Australian Photography magazine. Photoform grew out of the desire to create a magazine with sparks of creative camera and the equally serious intent into the late Cornell Capper's Concerned Photography Group in New York. Before I got up enough steam to start a higher quality magazine, I met the journalist Bruce Weatherall in Wellington, and with his impatience to do something straight away, we started. Um, he started a magazine called Photographic Art, History, Art and History in May 1970. Now I'm out of order. Oh, okay, that's Bruce on the top left of the screen at, um, anyway, at the Victoria Market Gallery. With my insistence on publishing photographs, the magazine metaphor metaphorized into New Zealand photography. Bruce ran out of spare cash when his marriage collapsed and he shifted to Christchurch in 1973. From being the photographer at the National Museum, I had become a lecturer in photography at Auckland University, working with Tom Hutchins and Max Ertley at Elam. With other idealists, we formed Photo Forum, incorporated at the end of 1973. Our main aim was to publish a quality magazine and generally promote serious photography of all kinds. Encouraged by the participants of the summer photography workshops that I directed from 1972 for the Auckland University, we produced 5,000 copies of our first issue of Photo Forum on the wrong assumption that photographers were interested in sex. We sent free copies out to everybody we knew of, local and overseas, then waited for the subscriptions that didn't come in. Some things don't change, and I found out later that Bill Jay had exactly the same problem when he launched his ambitious album magazine. Um, yeah, wow. Okay. Uh, okay. I just read what the hell. To hell with the, the, hell with the slides. Um, there was a picture there of Bruce Weatherall and Barry Hessen at the Victoria Market Gallery, which lasted a few months in 1973, and uh, we've missed it. Okay. Um, this is crazy. Um, okay. Oh yeah, getting getting creative people to admit their talent by exposing it to the public is not easy in New Zealand culture, where we are encouraged not to skite. Photoforum's assignments gave Peter Perry and Anne Noble um, an early opportunity to test their skills, that, and we published their very first photographs in the assignments in Photoforum. Photoforum workshops, Snaps Gallery, an occasional auction, and the Elam School of Fine Arts all provided the kind of backup needed for Peter Perry to make his own portfolios of original prints and for Noble to progress from making one good picture, the camera club approach, to making a thematic series, then her first book, The Wanganui, in collaboration with the Wanganui Sergeant Gallery. Okay. Um, I might have to jump. 
Okay. <laughs> right. On the other hand, um, what you saw earlier, <laughs> I think, was Ted Quinn's, uh, an item from Ted Quinn's thorough survey of New Zealand galleries, which mapped the barren territory that Photo Forum was designed to invade. And John Leach, for instance, summed up a general attitude when it stated that we do not intend at present to go in for exhibitions of photography. This gallery only deals with original art, it said. Today, Lang Gal Langsford show some of the most interesting photography around. Sometimes I think we're going backwards in our appreciation of fine photography. The market remains minuscule, relatively, and relatively conservative, generally. Photo Forum, I hope, will continue to stretch the boundaries and show work that has merit for its own sake, despite fads and trends. Um, too many students never get to learn how to photograph outside of a, a lighting studio or ever approach an editor with their work. If Photo Forum had only one camera, it would be called a pragmatic. It would have many lenses pointed in many different di directions, up, down, and around, seeking to record for posterity, something of what's going on in the world and what New Zealand photographers think of it. When we had lots of uh, writing, we started a tabloid newspaper to fill it up. Um, cool. I could jump here. Bloody hell. This is so fast. Okay. I'm going to really jump. Okay. Um, yeah. Haru Semishima's Bold Centuries, a most recent book, he called the subtitle The Photographic History Album, continues our publishing collaboration with individual photographers uh, on exceptional books that might otherwise never reach the, uh, the light of day. We also publish individual and thematic portfolios on the web, all members of which are over 160 currently, I think, are entitled to a digital portfolio. Some have more than one to make up for those of, it, of us like me who are too slack to put one on. Um, is that it? Oh. <laughs>